Welcome to On Networking. Conversations with thought leaders in networking technologies. Victor, you're a technical leader at Cisco, um, and you're the author of a recent book on network virtualization. Um, and one of, the, one of the chapters, chapter three in this book, goes over the basic technical requirements um, for a virtualized enterprise. And I wonder if you could give us uh, some overview as to what, you know, what that chapter talks about, what the, network, uh, what the technical requirements are for an enterprise who's looking at virtualization. The best way of actually looking at what, what's required to virtualize a network is to use um, the virtualization architecture as a framework. And basically, that architecture has three main, three main components. We have the access to the network, that is to provide some means of identification of which endpoints we're bringing there. We have the virtualization of the transport. And finally, we have the services that are applied usually in a centralized way to, to, this, to this network. So if we take it from, from the axis, when we look at different hosts or endpoints that are connecting to the network, we need the ability to dynamically identify who they are. And based on this identity, we also need the ability to apply a certain policy to the ports that they're connecting on. So we have, as a requirement, we have authentication, and we have authorization. When we authorize, we could apply a policy to the port by either applying an ACL, or we could basically place the port in a specific VLAN. Those are two ways of doing it today. There might be other things that we could do in the future. We could tag traffic coming from that, from that port, for example. But in any case, we take an action on, on that port so that we can identify the traffic uh, uniquely. Once we have the traffic identified, we need to then take that traffic onto a virtual container or a, a logical container within the network, which is what we call the virtualized transport. That virtualized transport needs to be done in two, two layers, the control plane and the data plane. So basically, in the control plane, you will find elements like VRFs, elements like um, VLANs that identify um, parts of the, of the MAC table. But basically, we are segmenting or partitioning our routing information, be it layer two or layer three. In the data plane, basically, we see the utilization of those partition tables. But we also see that as we traverse certain links and we're sharing those links, we need to virtualize those links. So we need some sort of tagging to identify traffic as belonging to one VPN or another as we traverse the links. That way, we keep traffic separate and identified as we go from one virtualized hop to the next virtualized hop. And there's many ways of doing that. You can do it on a hop-by-hop -hop basis, or you can do it on a multi-hop basis. Hop-by-hop -hop basis with dot one q trunks. On a multi-hop basis, you can do it with Jerry tunnels or with MPLS tags. In any case, that virtualized um, transport actually has its own, because it has its own control plane, it has its own routing rules, so you can actually make traffic follow certain paths in different virtual networks. And in general, you will want to take the traffic to a central location. At that central location, you will have <clears throat> what we call a policy node, or um, a place where we have different services in terms of security, in terms of load balancing, in terms of intrusion detection. So for instance, let's take the firewall, for example. We can have our traffic identified. We'll have our traffic assigned to different virtual networks. So different virtual networks would have the routing defined so that if you need to get off the virtual network, you will go to a specific uh, firewall place. And at that firewall place, if we centralize the firewalls, we can have those firewalls virtualized in themselves. So, so the requirement there would be for the services to be virtualizable as well so that we can map one-to-one -one a service to a virtual network. And in that way, you can now see how by assigning ports to different virtual networks, constructing the different virtual networks, and mapping those virtual networks to specific services, now we have the three elements that a network today would have. And now we have 
networks replicated in basically in a virtual fashion. We have several logical networks that have all the services that, that you would require from a network. And, and it's interesting how the services have taken the lead in virtualizing the elements because the services not only have the data plane and the control plane separated, but they also have the management plane separated, which basically means you could go in there and have totally separate policies for each one of those firewalls. And you could even take it further and hand off the management of those policies to, to a third party or a customer of yours, if you so wish to do so. So it's totally independent from the other elements, even though it's on the same physical device. So the requirements are, the requirements for virtualization is to virtualize each element that you have in your network. End to end. End to end. And um, is there any interaction between what happens on the server side and the data center? Does that have to be virtualized if you do this in the network, or is it sometimes or never? That's a good question that comes, comes up very often. So the virtualization of the servers uh, could, could actually be mapped one-to-one -to, -one to the virtualization of the network, or it could be used for more efficient distribution of servers within a virtual uh, mm -hmm. partition. So basically what I'm saying, you could have it both ways. You could have virtual servers that are uniquely assigned, or you could have virtual servers that are simply used to move within a virtual network. And in that case, we'd usually use a layer two virtual network rather than a layer three virtual network. The reason being that the servers expect their IP environment to not change as you move them around. And by using virtualization, you can actually take the mobility element of virtual servers beyond the single site and have it happen across sites because now you're presenting the, the, the virtual servers with the same logical environment they would see if they were in a single site. So we've taken a single site and we've basically stretched it to multiple sites. We've made a virtual single site across multiple sites. All right. Well, All right. it sounds like a very exciting field. It's going to continue to stay exciting. So Victor, thank you very much for the explanation. Right. Thank you. For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.